Alrighty, we are gonna do a little test this morning. Uh, I've been getting a lot of comments uh, and a lot of uh, probably deserved criticism on my milk crate cistern design that I'm planning to set a bunch of boulders on top of. I'm gonna pick up this boulder, which is pretty representative of the uh, of all the the biggest boulders I have left in my pile. Which I got another load, and they're pretty big. Uh, I estimate this one's about. You know, the max dimensions of about four by two and a half by two. Uh, estimate about 66% of that uh, times about 150 pounds per cubic foot uh, for basalt, which comes out to, it's probably in the range of 1,500 to 2,000 pounds. One of the strap on it here. I'm gonna pick this up and I'm going to set it this pile of milk crates and this will be these milk crates will be the this is the weakest configuration you could imagine putting this on uh, I'm using there's you know they're just freestanding no backfill or anything you know so they're not compacted there's nothing there's no force pressing against the sides you know packing them together and these are my rejects so you'll see uh, a bunch of them have cracked edges um, some of them have where is it where is it a couple of them have you know broken tops um, you know where the mesh top is is cracked and broken what basically ones that I'm not going to use uh, And I'm gonna set it on this 4x4 stack of, of Milk crates. So we're gonna see how it goes. It might go poorly I don't know but that'll at least tell me what I need to do before I start setting huge boulders on top of them Hi ho, hi ho, it's off to test we go Alright friends, here it is. I actually subtracted out all of the, I made a 4x4 a four four grid uh, and I subtracted out uh, all of the uh, milk crates that were not supporting it once I set it down. You can see, it's through it. The strap is loose, there's no weight. There's no weight from the excavator holding it up. Uh, it is being supported right now by two milk crates. Two defective milk crates, I will say, with no backfill against them. Um, I'll show you. I did a little hunt around. I'm not going to get underneath it, obviously, but uh, you can see where there's a little dimple in the pocket. Yeah, it dimpled the dimpled the edge of the crate there. And if you look, now this is already. Remember, these are my rejects. So these are already cracked. I was just using the crappy ones in case it's totally destroyed them. Uh, you can see, you know the bottom of the bowl is obviously not perfectly flat it's it's bowing in you know this top frame here but a lot less than I was expecting it to um, this is actually doing I thought it was gonna do a good job I thought it was gonna do a better job than what most people were really worried about but this is doing a better job even than I was expecting uh, now let's see can we find any more damage in here I don't see any I don't see any Remember, this is the weakest configuration you'll find if you put this in, a, in an excavation and backfill it so it's nice and compacted. It's going to perform even better if you, if you use milk crates that aren't already broken in some way. Anyways, there you go. Two milk crates supporting somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 pounds, I estimate. And I actually estimated that incorrectly. I looked it up again and... I was guessing 150 pounds, or I thought it was 150 pounds per cubic foot of basalt, but it's actually closer to probably 180 or 190. So, this stuff is heavy. Okay, how about one crate? I just decided that it would be fun to see how it would sit on one single crate. Uh, it definitely bowed it, the edges out a little bit uh, as I was setting it down because the bottom of the rock is not perfectly flat. I used the crappiest one that was already all broken up, the one I was showing you that had that divot in it. And I think it's not like the world's most scientific test here, you know. Uh, it's probably, it looks like it's probably being bowed a little bit there, uh, but it doesn't look like it's taken all that much stress. So that is really surprising, honestly. I did not expect it to do this well. Oh, and again, just in case there's naysayers, no weight on the straps. Alrighty, and here is that same rock sitting in that same orientation, roughly, uh, on a, it's not four by four, but like 43 by 43. This is, one, this is a light duty plastic pallet. And it is also 
handling it just fine. It's set right in the center. Um, where there's a center support under there. Maybe if you moved it around, you know, the tops of these things, they're, they're pretty sturdy. They're, they're similar to the milk crates when you push on them, the feel to it. Uh, I think the milk crates actually might be a little bit sturdier just because there's less uh, space between the supports. But anyways, there you have it. I tried to, the reason why there's dirt all over the side of this is because I tried to get this thing up so that I could demonstrate what it would be like on the milk crates, trying to either set it on this tiny face or you know, this tiny face with a bulb on it where that bulb was pushing into the crates. But uh, with the strap I have and the, or with the straps I have and the uh, being by myself and being time limited, I got to take off in a minute. Uh, I just could not get it, or at least not safely. So I gave up on that for now. I think what you can tell from this little experiment, which is highly unscientific, but uh, I think pretty demonstrative is that for rocks this big, you know, 1,500 pounds, you know, maybe 2,000 pounds is probably pushing it. Um, Backfilled, good crates uh, in, a, in an excavation, like, uh, you know, installed like aqua blocks in a cistern uh, or something similar or a pondless waterfall. Totally fine. I think this will work. I think this is going to work great. Uh, have even less concern than I did before after actually testing out these uh, these big rocks on them. Uh, aqua blocks, which are you know I got these for three dollars a piece, and they hold about seven and a half gallons. They hold almost exactly one cubic foot of water uh, in them. Anyways, the cost per gallon of water storage in a in a pond system for these, which I bought you know used and giant on pallets for three bucks a piece. And these things were nine bucks a piece. I don't remember exactly the volume of water that this thing can carry. But anyways, it's it's just a fraction of the cost of aqua blocks. Now, if I were using really enormous rocks, right? Like if I was using something, if I was using rocks bigger than this, which these are big rocks for me, but if I was doing like a commercial installation or like a really big, I, I would never be doing a commercial installation. Look at what I'm working with. Uh, anyways. Aqua blocks have their place. If I was trying to put in a, an immense point load, you know, this tiny little uh, surface resting with, you know, all that mass down on one of these, I think that could probably, I think that would probably do it in. Um, so if I was using even bigger rocks or had even smaller surfaces to rest on, you know, to rest on uh, on those on these blocks, then I would be a lot more concerned, and I'd, I'd find the paying the cost of you know, those water matrix blocks that are much, much stronger per pounds of square foot that they can handle. Uh, worth it, worth the cost. But for what I'm doing, what for a lot of us are doing, I think these are great. I think they're totally great. And I can't wait to uh, start setting some big rocks on them in the pond.